Hi there and welcome to this ESS Environmental Studies and Societies um, revision video for topic 5.3 um, and today we're looking at soil degradation and um, conservation of soil. So first of all you need to understand the reasons for soil being uh, degraded and the quality of soil dropping and some of these reasons come under the following. So overgrazing is um, an important one and this is the idea that too many animals may graze the same area. This means that plants do not have um, an opportunity to recover which leads to bare patches of uh, soil effectively with no plants on it um, and if the plants do survive the roots will, don't develop properly as a result and therefore you get unhealthy plants um, and this was seen in the Sahel region of Africa um, where wealth determined the number of cattle someone owned so very high levels of cattle stock which led to um, soil quality dropping because the plants weren't able to develop and the drought didn't help, hide it as a, help it as a result cattle then died and that led to mass famine as a result Overcropping is when you obviously plant too many crops, which de depletes the nutrients um, in the soil. Um, it makes the soil something called friable, which is when the nutrients in the soil, um, sorry, the soil becomes dry and susceptible to them being blown away by the wind. Um, nutrients don't get restored and you get an increased risk of crop failure when there is therefore wind um, er erosion as a result. An example of this um, was in the Dust Bowl in the 1930s in America, where there was an overuse of land which led to wind erosion, and then the wind and dust actually travelled thousands of kilometres. Deforestation, as you all know from other modules, is when we leave this exposed soil as a result of the removal of um, vegetation. Um, high levels of precipitation means there's a lot of water erosion and then this leaves um, this leaves the means the minerals leave that area meaning they become very um, very un, um, unfertilized soils and because the trees been chopped down the um, normally the leaves slow down the rain and the royal the roots bind the soil so therefore taking the trees away has a big effect on soil quality very quickly in deforestation some methods of agriculture are unsustainable and these include the following the total removal of crops which will leave bare soil that soil will then become eroded um, by wind erosion or rain erosion um, and also it can lead to increased evaporation of water which leads to salinization. Um, growing crops in rows um, with bare soil in between is bad because um, what happens as a result is you get that erosion exposure of roots um, etc and when you dig up the crops the soil will be more damaged. Uh, Ploughing in the direction of the slope so what that means is if you're if you've got a, um, um, a hill effectively like that instead of ploughing the right way to plough is to plough along the, the slope but if you ploughed either up or down you are going to massively increase um, channels which increase water flow which increases um, erosion as a result. Excessive use of pesticides um, which could toxify the land or toxify the plants. Irrigation in poor ways so spray irrigation um, means that water can be evaporated and what that often leaves then is any salt in the water is left when you form something a salty layer called salinization and monocultures means the same nutrients are constantly being depleted from the um, soil. Um, urbanization is a problem okay so obviously the more people living in cities um, increased runoff may happen downstream because the water is able to soak into what was originally farmland and um, and uh, forest land and therefore you get more water downstream and that can cause more erosion um, and often cities were originally based with agriculture um, as a result. Types of soil erosion then so there's a couple of different soil erosions um, so we need to know there is something called sheet wash and sheet wash is when large areas of soil are washed away during heavy rain this can include landslides um, gullying which is when channels on hillsides follow the rainfall and over time they get deeper and deeper and deeper. Wind erosion when drier soils have been removed by the wind such as the 
people. Um, and that is obviously a big issue because it takes the minerals with them. Now, in terms of conservation, we can conserve soil in a couple of different ways. So we can add soil uh, conditioners. And the example of soil conditioner you know is lime. Lime is used as we've done in the acid deposition module, looking at um, to neutralize acid soil so it can increase the pH. It also helps clay particles stick together so they act more like sand and therefore start to allow more drainage and air into the soil. That means that the um, amount of decomposing that happens in the soil increases so the nutrient level will go up as well. Soils, however, can become acidic and that can be due to acid precipitation, i.e. acid rain, or it could be due to organic matter being broken down, microbes releasing carbon dioxide, which makes carbonic acid when it dissolves in water, making the soil more acidic. Um, nitrification in a nitro cycle, which is when ammonia turns into nitrate, also releases acid, and um, leaching of base ions or alkali ions leaves the soil more acidic. So one way to prevent leaching and the movement of unwanted movement of water through soil and the unwanted breakdown of soil is by putting um, straw in soil, which helps the soil stick together and increases the organic uh, matter. We can use wind reduction if we want to reduce the amount of wind, which will therefore reduce the amount of wind erosion. We can plant trees and hedges in suitable places, which increases the soil, soil stability and obviously blocks the wind cultivation techniques so there's an example here of something called terracing which reduces the steepness so instead of having hills like that where the um, minerals might leachate down you can get um, areas like that and therefore it won't cause the leaching of the chemicals plowing um, can increase draining and there's more oxygen in the soil making the soil high quality and contour farming is where you play along the slope reducing erosion we can also increase irrigation methods and make them better. So instead of using um, spray irrigation, where you just spray the water randomly, you can use different methods to reduce evaporation, and then you get less of this salinization that we uh, mentioned earlier on. Um, how we do this then is we can actually cover the irrigated field. So if the water evaporates, it's caught and it drips back in again or it reduces evaporation in the first place, or we can use trickle flow irrigation where there are pipes with tiny holes in it, so it's trickling rather than being sprayed and much closer down to the soil. We can also leave poor lands and just accept that some lands are not meant for growing crops, and therefore it maintains the basic level of land. You can use them for cattle grazing instead. And we can use crop rotation, which is the idea that if we grow different crops over different years, they will take different minerals from the soil, so one mineral doesn't become completely depleted. And we can also grow legumes, which are um, nitrogen um, plants, which basically take nitrogen from the air using rhizobium bacteria and add nitrogen to the soil. And that adding nitrogen to the soil means that the soil quality is going to go up. So if you look at this diagram here, you can see that one year, they might grow greens, which um, as you can see here, sorry, uh, they require nitrogen. You may also next year find that you grow one that needs phosphorus. Okay, and another year you need ones that grow potassium and nitrogen. And then you would use legumes, which actually add nitrogen back into the soil. And soil is a key part of being a sustainable life on the land. Soil has importance in terms of its habitat, in terms of it helps carbon storage, particularly peat, which is a soil that absorbs and holds high amounts of carbon dioxide. It's responsible for all our food production and plant production. It's an affordable, cheap energy because you can use it for bioenergy and it effectively helps us try to make the world more sustainable. However, we need to be remember that 24 billion tonnes of soil are eroded annually and therefore our way of using it at the moment isn't sustainable. It does need to be treated as a non-renewable resource because it takes a long, long time to be replenished if soil quality is lost. So the soils in the rainforest which have been damaged after deforestation uh, will take a lot longer than we can afford for them to be replenished.